Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stu, and we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming for this important update. I have discovered how to mimic bump maps in Dreams. If you don't know, bump maps are a part of a system used by polygon renderers to fake depth on textures. This is an effect on rendered textures where you see it head on, but don't see it so much at angles. And while we don't have textures in Dreams, we'll now be able to better simulate fine texture depth on surfaces. That's enough intro, let's get to it. I'm working on a Dreams Guild asset I made called Temple Mount Stone Pit. I'll get in close so I can see what I'm doing. I'm working directly from above to avoid drift in the Y axis. I will make one copy of this sculpture and offset it a small amount. The direction doesn't matter so much, but it will work better in your scene if you line it up with lighting sources. I'll open the menu of one of the copies. It doesn't matter which one and I'm going to turn roughness all the way up. Nothing so far, but when we start turning up metalness, something happens. We start generating a pseudo surface texture. You have to mess around with this a little because the effect is different depending how you offset the object and by how much. I'll move this one a little and it will amplify the effect. If you offset it too little, it tends to look more like noise than texture. If you offset it too much, the effect goes away and you end up with a very obvious dark copy layered onto your original. We are fairly close to this object. This is a close-up effect. You can still see it from some distance, but you can see on the far side of this object that the effect fades out. Once you have the position dialed in, you can very often adjust the amount of the effect just by moving the waxiness metalness slider. I started with a flat stone-like object because this is where you will get your best results. You can adjust other sliders as well, like normal, and they will alter the effect in various ways. Here I'm adding some glow. Here I'm experimenting with the impasto slider and not a whole lot is happening, but when I move looseness up a little we get some interesting results. This is kind of a modified version of Brian Taylor 60's layered sculpture technique overall, but you can really see it here. Even though it's off topic a little, I'll run with that and create some interesting lichen textures, which is perfect for stone. With that sculpture we really only looked at one surface and it's important to note that this technique does have several limitations. Due to the nature of the second sculpt being offset, you're not really going to affect every surface of a sculpture when doing this. You can still use it with more three dimensional objects but you kind of have to pick which surfaces you affect, like with this concrete brick here. I also want to point out that this effect works much better in standard scene light or low direct light. With a bright spotlight, anything you gain is immediately washed out, but if you turn that light way down to 3 or 4%, it works much better. You can also use this on irregular shapes, but it's much trickier to get it right. In this capacity, it's closer to layering clones for the emissive, but you can still squeeze some free bumps out of it. When I started messing this, I would have thought this wouldn't work with the higher emissive fleck types, but that turned out to be very wrong. I'm working with a mossy lump here, dots fleck type with high impasto. When we turn up our uh, material sliders, the effect is very dramatic. This is the kind of effect lots of people, including myself, have been getting lately by smearing thousands of surface snapped edits. That can be expensive from a graphics thermal standpoint. This sculpture is 1% and the bump copy is free from a graphics thermal standpoint. This technique works better for hard surfaces, but you can apply it to softer surfaces as well with some finesse. Here I'm working with a tree trunk I recently made. If we add this like we have previously, the texture is off and it makes the tree look almost metallic. You can soften that by turning your metalness down, but then you lose some of the effect, of course.
This effect works really well with rust though. Nothing new from a technique standpoint, I just wanted to show the result real quick. Since this sculpt is slightly metallic to begin with, some subtle lighting looks really nice on this surface. Back on the subject of the direction of the offset, sometimes if you pull that in a cardinal direction, it's very effective, like with this rusty corrugated panel. This technique has some issues with curved surfaces, some work better than others. The general dilemma is that the offset on something like a pipe becomes immediately apparent. You can see delineation between the two sculpts on the side. I would say if you're going to use this with surfaces like this one, you want to pull along the curve rather than against it. I was curious about different fleck types, so I did this with each one. They all have slightly different effects at small scale. Some are particularly interesting like hexagon fleck. I didn't try all of these at higher impasto and higher looseness, but you can be sure some of those experiments are coming soon. One issue is surfaces that are already fully metallic because a lot of the time we are turning up roughness and metalness on sculpt copies to achieve this look. If we do that here, we get this nice rusted metal, but that's not what we're going for. We wanted a bumpy surface. I managed to get part of the way there by coloring the copy black, turning the metalness down, and then messing with the offset. With this particular surface, I never did get the bumps I wanted, but I did accidentally run into something that looks vaguely like a hologram, so it was worth the effort. You can see metalness is 100% in our copy and we're adjusting on the shiny side. This does require a camera looking toward the scene light source. Not sure exactly what you'd use this for, but it's a nice effect. While adjusting further, I also discovered something else of interest. If you adjust the shininess roughness slider back and forth with the sun reflecting in the surface, it looks an awful lot like a spotlight. This would be extremely situational and it would not cast shadows of course, but it's a jumping off point for bigger ideas in the future I think. Since we addressed metallic surfaces, I also wanted to investigate and talk about waxy ones. This works much better with waxy surfaces than metallic. It works in the same basic way as a medium surface, but you don't have to turn the metalness of your copy up as far. And I also want to look at plastic materials, which would be something like waxiness and shininess all the way up. These have issues similar to those of metallic surfaces, so I think the difficulty is whatever shininess is doing to the surface of the sculpture. It just isn't very conducive to this technique. That said, it does work out a little better with waxiness all the way up on the original because you're able to get some contrast from the copy's metalness. And also, messing around with this surface, I decided to turn up glow, and I got this really interesting effect. Alright, one more trick up my sleeve. So I wondered. This provides some nice static pseudo shadows to trick our eye into perceiving depth, but what would happen if we set that in motion? Things like this have been done before, but not in this particular way to my knowledge. In my opinion, this is a revelation for moving surfaces where it's able to apply. I didn't play with this for very long, I'll leave that to all of you. However, if you're seeing what I'm seeing, I think the results will be very interesting. So in this video we looked at a brand new idea based on an old one. Experiment with this, use it, maybe you'll stumble onto a way to improve it. More videos coming soon, but that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.